All right, welcome to the channel. Today I'm gonna to show you how to paint four dynasties with one recipe. 90% of the Necron schemes use the same foundation, so I'm gonna show you how to paint that and then how to extend it. All the paints you'll need will be listed below in the description, so let's get into it. All right, I'm gonna be showing you how to take your Necron dynasty from this to this and pretty much every other dynasty known to the 41st millennium. We're gonna be breaking this down into two stages. First of which we're gonna paint the Sotek dynasty which is the foundation for a number of different Necron dynasties. So we'll be kicking off with some exhaust manifold and some aluminium or aluminum if you're from the States, both from the Vallejo metal color range. We're gonna start off by overbrushing some exhaust manifold across the entirety of the Necron. Grab yourself a nice big brush for this so you can get it done quickly. I'm using the Series D medium dry brush from Artisopus and then I'm going to follow that up with a light dry brushing of aluminium just to help pick out some of those details. So now we're going to perform a reasonably heavy wash of Nuln Oil and Agrax Earth Shade. The reason that we're using both of these is that the Nuln Oil acts as the foundation. We apply this all over the model to ensure we get it into all of the recesses, dull down some of the metallics and create some basic shading and separation within the components. And then we follow it up with some Agrax or shade to give it that sort of grit, grime, that grim dark look, just to bring in some color variation and interest across the model. So you can basically apply the Agrax or shade into a number of different sections around some of the cracks, some of the chips, and various other places across the model. Be creative with it, apply it in different sections across all of your Necrons. Follow up with a light dry brush of the aluminium or aluminum. We're using a Series D small here so I can be more precise with the areas that I'm hitting. So I'm using more directional strokes here, thinking about how the dry brush is going to apply that paint over the area. Next we're coming in with some Abaddon Black and we're going to lay that down all over the gun just to get rid of any silver overbrushing or extra dry brushing that we got on those areas. It should only take one to two coats to cover these areas, give yourself a nice even foundation to apply some edge highlights over the gun. Once that's done grab yourself some Incubi Darkness for the first edge highlight and then some Thunderhawk Blue for the second edge highlight. Using the Incubi Darkness, we're just gonna pick out a number of edges on both the top and bottom of the gun. So there's a number of hard edges across the gun and then there's a couple of cylindrical shapes where you just have to plop in a quick line highlight. So you'll see I'm being quite quick with this, just using the side of my brush to apply these highlights. Even on the cylindrical shape in the middle, just using the side of our brush, dragging it along in a straight line. Get that nice, crisp, chunky edge highlight. Then gonna follow it up with some Thunderhawk Blue and just look to hit those parts that are facing upwards so it'll catch a wee bit more light. Just to help bring a wee bit more structure and shape within our model. Also use this as an opportunity to highlight any of those black wires or cables that are hanging down from the gun or from your Necron Warrior. And anything that I've done on the front here, I've done on the back as well. Now I'm using a size 2 Artisopa Series S to do my edge highlighting, but if you feel the need to use a smaller brush, by all means go ahead and do what is comfortable for you. Now it's time to create that signature green glow and weaponry for our Necrons. So I'm using a selection of different colors from different manufacturers here, but I'll put the Games Workshop equivalent in the description below. So we're going to start off with a base of Rift Green all over the green sections. Any tubing, any weaponry, any blades, any areas where you want to create that strong, bright green glow, start off with a base of Rift Green. Do your best to get this in the area. If you hit any of the edges, don't worry too much because we can pass it off as some OSL or glow effects. But thin down your paint just a wee bit so it flows into these recesses. Get into the rib cage and into the eyes as well whenever you're doing this. Try not to let your paint flood too much into these areas because it can dry a bit weird. We're then gonna follow it up with some zinc white. The reason I'm using zinc white for this and not another white is because zinc white tends to be a tiny bit more transparent and also flows a wee bit easier once it's been thinned down. But just pop it into all those recesses that we painted with the Rift Green. 
Then following this up with some contrast paint, I'm using Orc Skin here from the Vallejo Express range, but you can use any equivalent bright green contrast paint just to help flood into those recesses where we put the zinc white. So the zinc white foundation helps to create a more intense green color, which just helps to add to that Necron style. Then using some green skin flesh, we're going to apply that over the tubing and over parts of the weaponry. Adding some goblin flesh into that, we're going to start to create some transitions and gradients across the weaponry. Just trying to create that almost non-metallic-esque look to the blade and then bring a bit more intensity into the tubing. Followed up with some goblin flesh, applying it to the same areas as before, just looking to cover slightly less area than our previous layer. You can see this is a reasonably fast process to get started because we're establishing a lot of the light and the intensity before we start to smooth out our transitions. Mixing a bit of hikey yellow into the goblin flesh, we're just going to start to add some additional highlights into these areas, looking to pick out those points of light within the, the barrel of the gun and also where the energy core is. To smooth out these areas, we're going to start with some goblin flesh and just apply that over the areas to bring back some saturation into our greens. Then repeating this process with some green skin flesh, pushing the glaze towards the darker sections of the model. Pretty much working in reverse now to our highlight colors to help smooth out these areas. I always find it a bit easier to work from light to dark whenever I'm using my glazes. Darker pigments tend to glaze a wee bit better and avoid any of that chalky texture. Then coming in with some rift green, again just pushing that towards the darkest areas of the blade. Really trying to boost that contrast now to give you that strong glow and energy effect to the weapon. And anything that we've done to the front here, we've done to the back, using the same highlight pattern and same approach to smooth out these areas. And you can spend as much time as you want smoothing out these surfaces. Like this is 100% adequate and if you want to push it a wee bit further just to create a smoother transition it'll look something like this. And this is pretty much the finished version of the Sotek Dynasty. It's a nice clean, crisp, classic look to your Necrons. But now I'm going to show you how this foundation can be changed into pretty much any other dynasty. If you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. To paint the Novak dynasty, you'll need some Mephiston Red, Evil Sun Scarlet and Heike Yellow. We're going to apply a nice even base of Mephiston Red all over the sections that you want to be red. So the shoulder pads and the faceplate are generally the areas that you would apply this to. Obviously you can get creative and you can apply it to one shoulder pad, both shoulder pads. You can just apply it to the face depending on how you want your Novak Dynasty to look. This will take one to two coats to establish a nice even and saturated base layer. Try to ensure that you don't cover off any of that green that we did earlier. So try to be careful around the eyes. We're then going to follow it up with a nice thick edge highlight of Evil Sun Scarlet. Just running the edge of the brush along each of the sharp sections of the shoulder plate and the parts on the face. Whenever you're working on the face, try to highlight the cheekbones, the forehead and around the eyes. Same places as you would if you were painting a human character. Mix a bit of hikey yellow into your Evil Sun Scarlet and just apply a finer edge highlight to these areas. Try to be a wee bit more selective now and think about where the light's interacting with these different components just to help boost the intensity of the color, the value of the color and bring a wee bit more attention to certain sections of the armor plates. Nice and simple, now you have your finished Novak Dynasty. Now on to the Nihilac Dynasty, you'll need some Retributor Armor and some Sotek Green along with a bit of Heike Yellow. So we're going to start off with the Retributor Armor and we're going to apply that to all the sections that we want to be gold. If you're doing this on your characters you may want to get a bit more elaborate with the freehand but that's entirely up to you. So we're going to apply the Retributor Armor to the shoulders and to the faceplate, again trying to avoid those green sections that we painted earlier. You should only need one coat here to get a nice even base, but if you need to do two, by all means come back in and hit it with a second pass. Then I'm going to take the Sotek green and start working on our freehand patterns. 
I'm just gonna do a nice even stripe down the center of the forehead and the faceplate. Again, one to two passes should give you a nice even saturated coat. Mixing a bit of hikey yellow into your SoTech green, we're gonna add in some edge highlights here. Again, just the same places as you would on a human face, bring some attention to the forehead and around the eyes. Adding in a wee bit more hikey yellow, just come back in, hit that with a second finer edge highlight, just bring a wee bit more definition to that freehand. And that's pretty much it, your finished version of the Nilak Dynasty. And now we're on to the Sazerkin Dynasty. I've taken dwarf flesh here from the Vallejo Express contrast range, but you can use any equivalent paints or color for this. We're gonna apply this to the exoskeleton of our Necron. Just apply a nice even coat of your contrast paint just to help tint the color, just to bring it towards that brown kind of coppery look to the exoskeleton. Now I've chosen to leave my shoulder plate silver here, but if you wanna apply the contrast paint over those as well, it'll still look great. Just take your time and try not to hit any of that like skeletal structure underneath. But just one pass of your contrast paint should be enough to give you that Sazerkin Dynasty look. Again, whenever you're working around the face and around the chest, be careful not to cover up any of those green sections that you painted earlier. So just take your time whenever you're working here. By all means, use a smaller brush if you need to. And here we go, the finished Sazerkin Dynasty. So once you're all said and done, you should have the three different dynasties. Obviously, you can take this foundation and change it to suit any dynasty that you want to paint. This will even work if you want to do the Nefric Dynasty. But I think this is a super quick and effective way to paint multiple different dynasties and to get your Necrons on the tabletop quickly and looking great. Obviously how you've painted the green weaponry can be applied to all of your character models and all of your bigger Necrons across your army. If you want to see how I made these bases, there'll be a wee link thing at the top now. So I can't wait to see your Necrons on the tabletop. Be sure to share some pictures in the Discord and let me know how your first games of 10th edition go with the new Codex. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Hopefully you found that useful. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions for future videos, please drop them below in the comments. And if you want to take your painting to the next level, I have a Patreon that's focused around feedback and coaching. You also get access to exclusive guides and content. If you want to show me what you've been working on or what you've been using these videos for, please head over to the Discord and drop some pics into the whips or the completed project. I would love to see what you've been doing. Just want to say thank you again for watching and I'll catch you at the next one. All links can be found below in the description and don't forget to like and subscribe.